everyone. This is Sean, the owner of Help Energy Drink and medical doctor. I have many certificates as well as six degrees. Last before MD was uh, Masters in Neuroscience, a bachelor's majored in neuropsychobiology. I have a lot of neuro background, uh, but medical doctor was by far the hardest. Um, I'm going to answer some questions daily regarding the COVID-19 and anything that could help uh, people out with their confusion. I'm not a TV doctor. I'm not getting any money for this. I'm not the CVC. I'm not the, the, the WHO. So um, I'm just going to explain some straight up medicine. Uh, is ibuprofen bad for COVID-19? The answer would be no, clinically. Um, I'm going to show you a mechanism. It has the same mechanism as Tylenol. Tylenol is just a little bit more effective on the thermostat, you know, versus ibuprofen is a little bit better on pain. And Aleve, aka naproxen, is a little bit more effective in terms of musculoskeletal inflammation. Uh, so with ibuprofen and how they've been fear-mongering everything based off beliefs, um, it's, that's, that's really shouldn't be taking place with medicine, you know, so, um, a belief is just a belief. It doesn't mean it's the truth. So, you know, I'm talking the truth, you know, um, a belief is, could be, a hypothesis, but you have to back that with studies, and they haven't been able to do that. Um, now they've showed some correlations with it, but again, you can take that into account, but um, there's no mechanisms or medical clinical studies backing that. If anybody has uh, wants to argue me in any way, I beckon that, and I, I really beckon you to show me the proof, medically speaking. Don't give me beliefs and everything like that. And if anybody's going to argue with me, you have to be a medical doctor. Don't come to me with your lesser education or just because it's your common sense. You have no medical knowledge. You don't even belong in any discussion or argument in diagnostics or... In, in any way. If you're a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant, that's definitely understandable uh, because you have some great medical knowledge. Outside of that, if you don't have a higher level of medical background and education, academia, don't even come at me. I'll ignore you. Um, outside that, I'm just trying to help people. I'm going to show you a mechanism of what I mean. Uh, now, so I'm going to show you here the mechanism involved. I mean, there's different mechanisms. This is one of the main mechanisms. Cyclooxygenase is inhibited by NSAIDs. Also, acetaminophen is also an NSAID, like ibuprofen. They both block the same enzyme, cyclooxygenase, a.k.a. COX-1 and 2, typically more of a COX-1 inhibitor. And in terms, what they end up doing is they block different prostaglandins here, okay? So, okay, pain, okay, thermostat fever, et cetera. That's why we take NSAIDs. That's why we take acetaminophen. Now, there's other reasons why we don't. And of course, that's a, a, a different conversation. But acetaminophen is going to be better on the thermostat, but it can be very toxic, so don't take it at a high amount, okay? Because basically Tylenol, a.k.a. acetaminophen, is your number one cause of uh, drug-induced fulminant hepatitis. So in regards to that, you just don't want to take it at a high dose because it can become very toxic. It typically it's, uh, damages the, the central vein in the liver. Uh, it's really not necessary for you to know, but it's because it causes a lot of free radical damage. Okay, um, So you don't want to take a lot of Tylenol. You just want to take it sparingly for a fever. But if you are getting a little bit of fever because you've got the corona, 
a fever is good because it will kill your pathogens. You know, now if the fever gets too high, you don't, you don't want that to happen because then it could damage and kill a lot of your enzymes and proteins in your body. So this is, I hope, a little bit helpful. There is your mechanism. Okay, so this isn't TV. This isn't Dr. Oz. This isn't some bullshit politician doctor. This is straight from medical books right here in front of you. So you see how it blocks that enzyme, and that's what it's used for, and they're both blocking the same enzyme. So how is it that ibuprofen is going to cause further damage? Now, if there are correlations seen in the hospital setting, well, then I could see the hypothesis being drawn and studies to be evaluated. But in terms of clinical backing to cause all the fear-mongering and, and cause people to be terrified, that's unnecessary and that's bullshit. All right? I hope this helped. And each day I'm going to post something new.